Hey painting friends! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. Today we're going to paint a colorful peacock bird. This one was requested by one of my subscribers, so we're gonna do this one using acrylic paints. I have my soft body Liquitex acrylic paints with me today, but you're welcome to use any brand of acrylic paints you'd like. We're gonna use yellow, Azo, some cadmium free yellow light. These colors are pretty close, so if you only have one, that's okay. Some phthalo green, phthalo blue, a little bit of light blue violet. I'm also going to use some of this bright aqua green. I also have some sap green, raw umber, lime green, some yellow ochre or yellow oxide, cerulean blue, some burnt sienna, definitely need some titanium white. We also need Mars black and I want to use a little bit of this magenta color. Okay, so we have our paint colors here. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see all of them. Okay, so we have all of our acrylic paints. I'm just using palette paper for my palette. I have a cup of water for cleaning off my brushes. And for brushes today, we're going to try to do this with just five brushes. We have a semi-round brush. We have a flat tip brush. Both are about a half inch wide and we have a round tipped brush that's a little smaller. We have a liner brush which will be nice for getting those accents of the little tiny feathers at the end and this is a smaller brush that'll give us a little more detail on some of the larger things happening in the feathers. All right and our canvas today is an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas panel. We're going to start by just taking some water on the larger semi-round brush, taking some white, a little bit of burnt sienna and a little burnt umber, and we're just gonna quickly brush this over the canvas just to get a little bit of color in the background. The paint is, be is thinned down so that It'll dry more quickly and it's just going to throw a little extra color for the background on here. So you could use a larger brush if you have one and that's what you want to do to make this go more quickly or you could just use this same brush I'm using here. You can leave a little bit of white space if you want. It's not a big deal because we're going to be layering up so many feathers here. I just want to have a little something in the background to build off of so it's not just a totally flat background. You can take a little more of your umber, that in here. Basically just covering everything. You can leave this section empty at the bottom. And you can make things go a little bit more brown towards the center here. We kind of want to make things a little darker here and then get lighter coming out. It's really quickly working. All right, it's a good starting point. Now let's start, we'll keep using this brush and we're going to take some of that cerulean blue I didn't really totally clean off the brush yet because I'm mostly just going to sketch out the bird here. So we're going to start with the bird. Uh, if you put a little dot in the center of your canvas from left to right, top to bottom, you'll know where your center is and we're going to use that to figure out where to put the bird. So just slightly over, less than an inch over, you're going to do a straight line down and then there's a little curve. So the straight line down comes just, if we're putting this into quarters, one, two, three, four, this is would be one, two, 
just goes a little bit past this quarter point here and then a little curve there and then we're gonna get the head heads just like a circle more like an oval comes up just like that a little more so if you're putting this in quarters going up the head does not come up past that middle one two three third quarter up and it's just kind of like this you can start with the circle and then kind of define the shape a little more it ends up being a little more like an oval and then the beak kind of goes right from this point and does a little shape like that to kind of finish the circle off and then comes pretty much straight down from this little line there and straight in from here and there's a little curve at the base of the beak so your beak is just a little smaller than the head itself and then there's going to be an eye there's like a little white line here and then there's a little eye right there and then the neck starts just behind the beak here comes down at about an angle I want you to put a little mark at the bottom here for separating the bottom into thirds one two three it's kind of near this third here and it has a little bit of a round shape there and then kind of goes in goes at an angle from there so I realized I made this arc a little too high up so I'm just gonna make those two points meet and we'll cover that little line up later all right and then we've got the part of the peacock before all the feathers turn crazy colors and it's still blue he's just got like some blue feathers right here and then it kind of just comes right down just like that at a little angle like that so that's the blue part of the peacock that's his neck and just the start of his back and then we can take the same paint color we have here and we're going to start just sketch out where all right it doesn't come up past the head it comes to about right there where the there are some like fan like feathers here kind of like a turkey which I never noticed that peacocks even have that <laughs> until I had to paint one and that just comes down to right about there and these are all just like a bunch of fans you don't have to put these in yet but I'm just doing that so you know that those are gonna go here just like a bunch a bunch a bunch a bunch of fans cool and then we just have all of the fun really beautiful feathers and we are gonna do that later actually let's do the feathers now let's do the background stuff first and then we'll get to the bird details I'm gonna put this brush in the water and now we're gonna switch to this brush right here this is the smaller flat tip brush and with this we're going to start to get these crazy feathers that all just come out in different they basically all radiate out from the center of the peacock's body so we're going to start by just doing some lines we're just going to use white paint for these lines and we're going to have some right here a couple there you want them to be straight Mine aren't looking perfectly straight right now. They're mostly straight. These are going to be the like quill part of the feather. And this is why we made the background a little darker first so that we could do these white quilly lines here.
All right, so yeah, it doesn't look like too much just quite yet, but that's okay because we know we're going places with this. Some of our phthalo green and white and some cadmium yellow medium. And we're just going to put in some circle outline shapes for now. So we're going to do a little, I guess it's not really a circle, it's kind of more like an oval. We're going to do one, that was way too big, one right there, one right here, one right there, another one right there, another one right here. So it's like an oval, but it's a little bit sharper, but still round on the outsides. The angle varies a little bit on these circle things. All right, so now we know where those are gonna be. Now we're gonna switch to this brush, which is our smaller round tip brush. And we're going to take phthalo green with cadmium yellow, medium, and some phthalo blue. A little more phthalo green, maybe a little bit of that bright aqua green as well, and a little white. Let's do a little more phthalo blue. <laughs> Just trying to get that perfect color. All right, looks good. Now you're gonna dip that in the water, and you're gonna start doing some lines all coming off from your quill point and things are going to overlap you're definitely going to overlap your little circle oval things here but I just wanted to put those down first so we knew where they were and then we'll come back later and make them look pretty so you're just lightly pressing here. It really helps if you water down the paint a little bit. Get that nice line. Same thing here. And you're just going to do this all the way around for every little feather. Which seems like a lot of work, but it'll go pretty quickly if you just let yourself work and don't get too caught up on a single little detail.
Alrighty. Next, we're going to take some umber and just go over a few of these with some umber. And do some over here, mostly on this side. Add a little bit of sap green with the umber, a little phthalo blue, just darkening things down in some sections even more. Down in the corner, we want it to be a little darker. And down here. really dark down in this section. Take more just sap green now and try to do some with some sap green. Keeping things a little darker right around the body. Too. There's a little shadow and things are a little closer together here. Just kind of pushing the paint around, right around the body. Hey. And we're going to take some more Burnt Sienna for over here. It's kind of crisscrossing all these lines. A little darker up here in the corner. You just really want to build up a ton of tiny little feathers by doing crisscrosses all over the place. And now let's work more on those round shapes that we had. If you can still see yours, <laughs> I can still tell where mine are. Uh, if you uh, kind of lost yours then you could just repaint them in no big deal and we're going to start with some phthalo green with our lime green and we'll just start painting that whoops let's add some white and a little yellow and just paint them fill them in with that color
Take a little more phthalo green, sap green, some more yellow. For this side where things are a little cooler. even a little darker over here so I added a little more phthalo green Now we're going to mix a little bit of burnt sienna with our yellow ochre color and a little white and add a circle inside these ones. You may need to wait until the green paint dries before you do this. But this basically just goes right inside the green one on every single one. You can add a little more burnt sienna. Now we've got enough done with the background that we can let that yellow color in the circles dry and start to kind of work on this part of the body. So we are going to start with the, the vivid lime green and 
Thalo green and cadmium yellow light, cadmium free. And we're just going to fill this all in with that base color. Just make a couple little humps on the back end there. Like one, two, three, four. Don't make it a perfectly round shape there. Do a few back here too. And basically just fill in this whole shape with that color, this whole section. All right, and next we're going to take some of our Thala blue and sap green and a little bird sienna. And now this is probably one of the trickier parts in the painting, but you need to just make a bunch of little fan shapes like this. And they're a little closer together in the front here. If you just start at the bottom and kind of build up from there, and that should be good until you get all the way to the outer edge. So I'm a little closer together over here. Getting a little bit bigger over here. All right, now we can let that part dry and we'll do a little more detail on that later. For now, let's move over to the neck part of the bird. We can use our flat tip brush and take some Thala blue with white and Thala green. And mix some cerulean in there too. And we can use that color for down here. Basically just go up your outline of the bird's neck and use that dark color for the outer and bottom parts. You can take a little more just like pure thala blue for the way bottom down here and the outline. And then we're going to take some white, some of that turquoise color or the aqua color with our cerulean blue and thalo green and just start to build this up. The trick here is to work a little bit more quickly so you can blend these colors in and get that transition. I'm pressing way more lightly here so that the colors can blend together a little bit. And you don't want to blend too perfectly because we do still have some feather texture here. So you want to leave a little bit of some texture visible with the brushwork. 
and take a little more of that shadow color for the right side let that blend in now the bird's neck looks a little more 3d and you can do some little like swoops like this and then kind of fluff them out and that'll really boost that 3d look got just like some pure phthalo blue on the side of the neck. Taking more of that highlight color again with our aqua and filling in this color back here. And all those feathers in there. Now I'm just wiping down my brush, taking some of that aqua color, and we're going to put some of the straight aqua right here under the beak on the neck. And we can take some phthalo green mixed with white. And a little yellow. Use a little bit of that in there too. Just a little bit, nothing too crazy. And let's see, what else? Let's use more phthalo green with white. And just put a little bit of highlight in the feathers here, kind of coming up and down. Just a little bit. Take some white and some of that sky blue. Do a little bit here. Wiping down my brush again. Now I'm just taking straight phthalo blue and I'm going to build some shadows up here. Where those feathers are, we've got a little shadow in there. And we've got a shadow on this side of the neck. to add a couple shadows coming down there. Just helping to build the shape of the bird a little more by adding some subtle shadows. Just kind of blending things in. And yeah, we've got some phthalo green and phthalo blue shadows on like this section there. All right, now for the head, let's just start with phthalo blue right here. And I'm going to put that brush in the water and I'm going to switch to my smaller flat tip brush for the rest of the head. So we're going to take some black paint now and get this little section sketched out basically this is the head this is the neck it's really dark right under the neck I'm gonna get the extra paint off my brush and just very softly blend that into that color there and the black kind of comes down like that leaves a little space under the eye so there's the black section of the head and I'm just gonna do a little black around the beak here so we know where that is all right let's get the beak real quick I'm gonna take some brown with some white and some of our sky blue violet color and we're just gonna fill that in go right up to the black can let the colors blend a little bit here Just bring that down. And just take some white with a little bit of ochre on it for the edge of the beak. Take your extra paint off the brush if it's getting a little too much.
And then we've just got some black for a circle where the eye goes. You can continue your black under there a little bit. And then let's switch back to our phthalo green with a little phthalo blue and white. Or just pure phthalo green might even work here. Just got the beak. And just adjust the shape of that beak a little bit. You can always make adjustments when you're doing acrylic paintings. It's the good thing about acrylic paint. Taking just some umber here. And we need a little more of our phthalo green in this spot. Right around the head there. Kind of comes around like that too. There we go, that's looking nice now. Just gonna lighten up this beak again. Get that shape better. There's a little bit of brown right above that white spot. And for the eye, to make it come to life a little more, we're going to add a little white dot in the eye. And then we can take our liner brush and grab a little white paint. And just put a little line right at the front there. And now we can take some of that turquoise light color that we had for the highlight on the chest here. Brighten this up again. And just add some little dots. Little dabs of paint. So now this, these things should be dry enough. Let's move back over to these. So we did our green circle, then we did our tan circle. Next we have a light blue circle that you can make by getting your cerulean blue with some white and some bright aqua green. And now you just make this circle take about half of your tan circle, like the bottom half. And try to keep everything within the tan or beige ochre circle. Just 
make this for everyone. And then you can just take some white with a little bit of aqua and just add a little highlight around the base of that blue part that you just put in. Just like a quick little line. Doesn't really have to blend all that much. This just helps to give it that more iridescent look. Okay, and now we're just gonna take some straight phthalo blue and you're gonna put a dark blue circle in your blue circle. It's going to start above that little highlight you just put in and go to the top. And some of the feathers it looks like it touches the top of the blue and some of it, it looks like there's a little space there still. They also have a little bit more of like a sharper bottom. Alright, now let's put some highlights in here. So let's take some of our green and just add some highlights to the top part of that. Just with our vibrant green. Only at the top of the first green circle we put in there. You also can take just some pure ochre and add a little highlight to some of these ones. Maybe ochre with white. Just at the tops. take some magenta too 
mixed with a little bit of that violet green or violet sky violet color and add that to some of these ones over here are a little bit more on the purple side because of the light some of our phthalo green and our cadmium yellow light lots of phthalo green a little bit of that sky blue color too dip your brush in the water a little bit and let's do like a line with some feathers kind of coming out of these so you just kind of throw the feathers around like that And it comes out from a central point at the bottom and comes back up. So as you can see, these uh, feathers with the circles on them are definitely the most identifying part of the peacock because it's starting to look a lot better now. And let's take some of that lime green and some white and a little bit of yellow ozo and do a little highlight underneath all of these. Looking good. Now let's focus more on these guys in here. We're just going to take some pure yellow, cadmium yellow medium. There's a tiny bit of green on my brush still, so I'm just going to go with it. Let that stay on there. And we're going to start with the ones on this side. Basically just fill in each one border to border with this yellow color. You definitely want to leave that little bit of border space in between them. This is a good time for you to make your border thinner if you made it too thick before like I did. <laughs>
And then for the ones on this half, you kind of just want to do that yellow right under and not totally cover up the whole feather pattern. Okay, and then we can take some white, mix that with a little yellow, add a nice little highlight on the right side of all these. And then you can take some phthalo green with a little bit of the cerulean blue and white with a little bit of that aqua color too. And add that on the left side on a few of these ones over here. Kind of just goes right at the bottom on some of them. All right, doing good. Now let's just take some of our burnt sienna and we're going to put this in the central parts, kind of coming up from the center of each one like a little line. And you can mix some bird sienna with your ochre and start to put some of that color in a few of these ones up here. Kind of letting it fade back into those darker brown ones. There we go. Alrighty, so that's looking good there. I'm gonna take my blue with a little bit of black and you know what? We're gonna switch to the liner brush here. Blue and black and I'm just gonna outline a few of these again. Especially on this side, things are a little darker. Just quickly Taking the liner brush, it's thinned down with water, so it's making the marks more quickly and nice and smoothly. And then I'm going to use that liner brush and start to add more detail to the feathers here. Coming right out from the center, they're going to be a little darker.
I'm gonna take some sienna, mix with the blue, and some water, and start to build up some feathers from here. Need to just, I know we don't know where those white quills are anymore. We're actually gonna re-add those soon. So you just wanna, wherever you have one of these circle things, that's where a quill's gonna be. So that's where you're gonna have more of your feathers coming off of there. down here we've just got a lot of darker feathers so I'm just going to take some sap green dip that in the water start to add some more darker feathers down here And by making these feathers dark around here, adding more and more little straight line feathers, it's making these circle things pop out more. You could take your time with this painting and make it look way more detailed and very intricate. I'm kind of breezing by just to give you guys more of the basic idea of how to create this. And you are welcome to make this as detailed as you'd like if you recreate this painting. You could take some more of your aqua color, start to add some highlights. And you can go back to your white and then add your little quills back. Try to keep them where you have the circle thingies. <laughs> Anybody knows the actual technical term for those, you can leave a comment and let me know because I do not know what those are called.
He's looking pretty good. For some final touches, I think I'm just going to take some more white with my green, with my aqua, bright green aqua color, and just add some highlights on the outer edges of these things. Circle things. <laughs> Basically, this painting is all about color. The way that you place your parts of the peacock and the way you place your feathers isn't quite as important as getting this color more accurate, like getting those highlights where little highlights should be. So don't focus too much on getting each little feather exactly where I have it in this painting. Just have more fun with the colors. And as long as you get these circle shapes right and basically get the shape of the neck, I think you're going to have a pretty good looking peacock. Keep adding. The more you keep layering up these feathers, the more like three-dimensional the peacock looks. So it's a lot, but you know, you can stop whenever you feel like you've reached the level of detail and texture and three-dimensionality <laughs> that you're looking for. I'll take a little more of my lime green with some white here. Add some more there. Lots of really pretty colors. Over here we've got more of our sienna and ochre highlight colors. And a little yellow in there too. And then over here, it's a little bit more cool, blue-green, darker. Outline the neck a little more. I knew I was going to forget this part. Okay, so these peacocks all have these little things on their heads. <laughs> so I'm just going to take some black, water that down, use my liner brush, and basically all coming out from this one little point. He's got, oh, I guess they're, like it's a little point on the back of his head. A little too much water there. Oops. Got all these little lines, and then we can take our small flat tip brush and just take some blue, and it kind of makes a crown. There we go, that looks better. And then we can take some of our little turquoise, 
add some little highlights on there. I'm going to take this turquoise and just touch up my highlights on the head a little more too. Alright guys, that is the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed this real-time tutorial to paint a peacock using acrylic paint. If you have any recommendations for future painting tutorials, leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see me paint. Thanks and have a great day! Happy painting! Bye bye!